Hey guys, today we're covering the Inset Faces tool. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete Intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for new, general. If you're asked to save the previous file, there's no need to do that unless you want to come back to it. And in the new file, as usual, we have our default cube. Now let's go in and talk about a new tool called the inset faces tool. First, we need to get into edit mode for this cube. So press the tab key on your keyboard to get into edit mode. Then click once in space to deselect anything that's already selected. Let's go ahead and roll the mouse wheel forward to zoom in a bit more on the cube. And now that we're beginning to take a look at these 3D modeling tools, it's an important time to point out when we talk about vertices, edges, and faces, and the geometry that makes up a mesh, if you've noticed with the extrude tools, they work on the faces where you can extrude them in different directions. So if you have a cube, you start out with six different faces you could extrude. But obviously, the more you manipulate your model, you can come up with new vertices, edges, and faces that give you new geometry to work with. And so the more you can think about how do I change the geometry so that the new geometry I have to work with helps me further create the 3D model I want, the more you can think of things that way, the easier and easier it will be to conceptualize how to create the 3D models you want in Blender. And the inset faces tool is a perfect example of this. So right now I'm thinking to myself, I have a face here on the cube and there's not much I can do with it. I can scale it, rotate it and move it. Or I know how to use the extrude tool to extrude it out. And with the extrude tool, I can create some new faces and that's great, but I still might struggle to think of how to create other kinds of shapes. So the inset faces tool helps us do something slightly different. Let's take a look at it. Remember that if you'd like to, you can drag these tools out so that you can see the names. And the inset faces tool is just beneath the extrude tools. So go ahead and click on it. There's only one tool here. You notice there's no little arrow here mentioning that there's more tools. So the inset faces tool is just one tool. Let's switch to face selection mode. We need to select a face to be able to inset it. So press the three key across your top row of numbers that switches you to that face selection mode. Then click once on this side face to select it. You'll see that you have this circle here. If you hover over near the edge of it, that's the best place to start. If you hover near the middle of this circle, the tool will work, but it'll be a little more difficult to control the sensitivity. So out near the edge here, go ahead and click and hold down and drag. And if you drag in, you notice that you're insetting a face towards the middle here. So you can inset as far in as you'd like, but let's just inset it in just a little bit and then let go. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Okay, so what's the point of this? We still have a flat face here, it's just that we've inset this face. Well, now we have new geometry to work with. So let's assume that we only wanted to inset this face. And then let's, just to make sure that we're aware of what's going on here, let's click back on the select box tool and then click once in space. So we have these extra edges and vertices and an extra face here, along with these four faces that we can now manipulate. So when I say manipulate things, obviously we just learned the extrude tools. We could extrude any of these faces individually or together in some fashion. We can also click to select this face that we just created. And of course we can press G for grab and then press X for the X direction and we could move this in or away. 
So we can start to manipulate it in that way. We can also hit the escape key here. We don't want to do that. We can also scale this or rotate this. So the idea here is we've created a new bit of geometry that we can manipulate. Now, something else, let's go ahead and undo back a step. So control Z on a PC, and we may need to do it a few times. I'll do it one more time and one more time. It also respects the last selections and other things I've done. If you're on a Mac, remember you can use command Z. Then let's go back to the inset faces tool. And let's go ahead and inset a face again. So click near that circle and drag in a bit and let go. As soon as you're done insetting that face, remember the adjust last operation panel down to the left. So as its name suggests, whatever the last operation was, you could make adjustments to it. So go ahead and click where it says inset faces here. And you'll see that there's some different things. And rather than checking the boxes on and off, and trying to figure out what each and every part does. You can experiment with that. But the main thing here is if you needed a very precise thickness, you could click and drag this and you notice that it's giving you precision in your thickness. So if for some reason you knew the exact inset here, you could adjust that here. But where I wanted to call your attention is the depth. So go ahead and click and drag this to the right. And you'll notice that how I had shown that you could use the move tool you can also just adjust the depth immediately after creating your inset, both to the outside, if I drag my cursor to the right, and to the inside, if I drag it to the left. So I'll go ahead and let go somewhere, either to the outside or inside. And you could keep creating new insets. So click and drag here and inset another face in, and maybe drag that depth in a different direction. And so you could continue to do this. Notice this as well. Orbit over to the top. And let's click on the top face to select it. You have the inset faces tool. Let's go ahead and click near the circle and drag in a bit to inset those faces in. You can inset more than one face at a time. So let's try grabbing each of the four outside faces, not this inner one, but the outside faces. So what I mean by that is let's select them. So click once on this face, then hold down the shift key and click this one, this one, and this one. Now we have the inset faces tool. Let's go ahead and click to drag this and you notice you can inset faces there as well. And that has a different kind of a behavior here. Notice that when you have all of them selected, they're staying connected here at the edges. Now let's contrast this. Let's control Z to undo that. Click once in space and let's only select one of these. So click once on this face and let's inset it. Click here and drag in and notice now the inset is coming away from this edge. So how do I know what I'm going to get? Well, when you're new to the inset faces tool, it won't be really obvious how the geometry is going to work at first. You're going to have to experiment with it again and again. I happen to know if you undo this control Z, I happen to know that if you grab this connected group here that the inset will be to the inside of all of it and it'll stay connected as well because these are all connected. And then I happen to know that if you take one face as we just did, the inset will be within that single face. But I encourage you to play around. So pick a side of this, inset it a bit, maybe go to the adjust last operation panel and increase the depth. And then maybe say, huh, I wonder what it would do if I hold down the shift key and select each of the outside faces and then deselect the inside face here. And let's see what happens if I use the inset. Okay, it does that. And then let's see what happens with the depth. Oh, I could bow it out. That's interesting. Or I could bring it in. That's kind of interesting. And so you can play around with the inset faces tool on the different sides of this cube and just experiment. You could even experiment with some of the checkboxes, see if you could figure out what happens there. But all along, remember that really all you're doing is you're creating new faces, new edges, new vertices that you can adjust using all of the things you already know how to do. The extrude tools, especially here in 3D modeling mode, or even the transform tools, which are move, scale, and rotate. So again, just to remind you of that, you can click on a face, press R for rotate, 
and then lock one of the directions. For this example, I'll press Z, and you notice that I could rotate this face a little bit. Then click to set it down, and then you could even go over to extrude and extrude that face now in a new direction. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about extruding, scaling, rotating, moving. Those are tools we've covered in the past. Just pointing out as you use the inset faces tool in experiment, just remind yourself you're creating new geometry which can be adjusted and manipulated to come up with the shapes you want. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.